Okay, and he will do what? Always make a... All right.
Good morning, family. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, let us, let us, let us rejoice and be glad in it as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in the month of July. God has been good to us. And we've come one more time just to worship and praise his holy name for his goodness and his grace and his mercy. It is just good, good to be here. So thank you, God, for allowing us to come together one more time. For those on Facebook, YouTube, and on the telephone, we are grateful that you are tuning in with us this morning. And we are grateful for those of you that are sitting among us because we came to worship God. We came to praise God. We didn't came, come to praise anything else but the almighty God. And if he has been good to you this week, why don't you give him a hand praise? Because of God's grace and mercy, we are all here today. And there's something going on on the inside that says it's all right, it's all right. So people of God, no matter what you've gone through this week, God has taken care of each of us. And so we've come one more time just, just to say thank you. At this time we will turn these services over into the hands of Sister Danielle DeRose. Good morning, Francis Burns. As we continue to worship God in spirit and truth, again, we are just so grateful to all our friends and visitors that we have with us this morning. God is good. God is good. As we go into this week, let us just, let us just remove all the obstacles that we have in our lives that are burdening us right now. Let us just let God Almighty just fill our hearts with presence, with that almighty presence that we can feel. As we continue to worship God in spirit and truth, our morning service will proceed as follows. We will begin by honoring our senior, the Reverend John C. Pearson. The morning prayer will be given by Sam Myers, followed by the scripture reading by Kathy Williams. We will have a musical selection followed by the sermon and the invitation to Christian discipleship by our pastor, the Reverend Geneva Stafford. Our dynamic Francis Burns musicians will give us an instrumental selection and Reverend Stafford will conduct the benediction. Let the spirit of God fall down in this house. Be blessed. Our elders are the keepers of our history and the shared history of this country. They serve as our mentors in the present to pave the way for a better future. We give thanks for your presence among us. You matter to us and we know that we matter to you. And so, it warms our heart today to honor one of our elders, Reverend John Carson Pearson. His mother used to jokingly say, John would have been born on the 4th of July, but I was too busy. So on July 5th, 1933, John Carson Pearson was born in Bishopville, South Carolina. He was the last of three sons to be born to his father and mother. His father, Reverend Solomon Pearson, was a Methodist Episcopal pastor, now known as United Methodist, and a small farmer. His mother, Alfonso Richardson Pearson, was the school teacher of a small schoolhouse for first through 11th grade. John and his brothers played the normal children's games and got into the normal childhood behavior which got them into trouble with their stern father. However, the three boys often imitated real life and played church. Though their parents may have been amused, the outdoor cat was not impressed when he became their first and last baptismal candidate. After graduating from high school, John moved briefly to New Jersey with his middle brother and drove trucks. 
He made enough money to help him get into Claflin College in Orangeburg, South Carolina. After his sophomore year, he joined the Army to finance his remaining college career, which he did after satisfying his initial two-year tour of duty. John returned to Claflin College in 1955. By this time, he was confident of his calling to the ministry and attended seminary as well. He was actively participating in the civil rights movement. Sit-ins involving police disruptions and arrests were not an uncommon part of his life. John understood the significance of his relationship with God being the very source and strength of his convictions. He also understood that God had been preparing him to share God's word and support others on their spiritual journey. As was tradition for Claflin students during that time, John attended Sunday Chapel. The seating went according to alphabetical order and he found himself sitting next to Edith Reeves of Rain, South Carolina. She became his college sweetheart. John graduated from Claflin College with a bachelor's degree in theology in 1957. He also completed seminary requirements, officially becoming Reverend John Pearson. Shortly after that, he re-enlisted in the Army and he became a chaplain and an officer. While assigned to a military post in Kentucky, Reverend Pearson, still in contact with Edith, proposed to her by telephone. Soon thereafter, he traveled to Reigns, where Edith had returned to teach in her hometown and wished her off to the county courthouse, where they were married by the Justice of Peace. John's new brother-in-law, who was about 13 and 14 years old, saw the couple going into the courthouse and spread the news to the family before John and Edith could say, I do. First Lieutenant Revan Pearson was then stationed in Japan for a few months before being stationed in Frankfurt, Germany, where Edith joined him. Germany is where he became a father to Sheila and John Jr., after a few years, Reverend Pearson returned to the States as the head of his own family and moved along the coast according to his military assignments in New York. Reverend Pearson has been acknowledged for various accomplishments in the Army. In the 1970s, he played a significant part in the study of African-American soldiers' tendency to take their church worship off military bases. Recognizing the different type of church environments and worship behaviors, Reverend Pearson created a community with his peers to develop a gospel church service that catered to the more charismatic expressions African Americans are likely to gravitate. At the time of his retirement from the Army in 1980, Reverend Pearson had been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. His retirement was successfully planned to occur outside of Columbia, South Carolina, in the small, quiet town of Elgin. During his tenure in the military, Reverend Pearson met the necessary requirements to maintain his relationship with the SC Conference of the United Methodist Church. It was a simple transition to change his status to an active member of the SCUNC, allowing him to preside over Bluff Road United Methodist Church, whose small membership met in an old-time schoolhouse when he arrived. It became a vibrant and growing congregation with a new church building by the time the conference transferred him. His next assignment was to serve as pastor of three churches in Sherwa, South Carolina, Wesley UMC, First UMC, and Pleasant Grove UMC. After serving several years in Sherwa, Reverend Pearson was appointed superintendent of Greenville District. His final assignment before retiring as an active pastor was Wesley UMC in Charleston, South Carolina. Reverend Pearson returned to Elgin, South Carolina with his wife and became a regular member and volunteer associate pastor of Francis Burns United Methodist Church in Columbia, South Carolina. Reverend Pearson remained in Elgin, South Carolina until 2021 before moving into Harmony Senior Living in Charleston, South Carolina. He is 89 years old and enjoys the company of his family and friends, including his two children and four grown grandchildren. And so, Francis Burns, please join us in celebrating our senior for the day Reverend John Carson Pierce. Good morning, Francis Burns. It is now time for prayer, not just only this time, but all of the times that we have to share just a moment with the Lord. Let us pray. There's something about that word that's just so special, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something so special. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be able to say 
that word and say so many different things that could help someone else. We're struggling this morning, dear Lord. There's so many different things that are happening in our lives. So many different things. Some good, some not so good. There's some who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Some who are cheering for that newborn baby. There's some who are just struggling with financial needs, homelessness, incarceration. And just one act of that, dear Lord, just doesn't affect just one person. It affects so many. And when that happens, we have to call on you because we don't know what else to do. And we call on you, dear Lord, because we know that you're going to give us the comfort that we need and the strength to endure. There's so many different things that are happening out there that cause us to just want to give up sometimes. But all we have to do is just relax and call on you, Lord Jesus. And we know that it's going to be all right. I stand here this morning just, just being grateful for the moment. We sit here this morning being grateful for the moment. We're listening in in a special way because you could have allowed us not to be here, dear Lord. You, you've allowed us to be here this morning. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Our hearts are heavy, but through it all, you give us peace. You bless us. You carry us where we need to go. And through all of that, dear God, once again, we say thank you. Lord, I, I open up my heart, I open my mind, and once again, we always ask you, dear Lord, to bless and protect our minds and our hearts because the things that we say can hurt someone. The things that we do can take a life. And there's still so much of that, dear God, that we don't understand. We don't understand why someone wants to take the life of another who don't even know the individual. We don't know why things are happening the way they do. But God, we do know, we do know that you have it all under control. We see in the news every day how someone has been inflicted with some type of pain. We see every day, dear Lord, how, how someone is struggling just because of somebody else's plight. Please continue to bless our hearts. Please continue to bless the, the way that we go. And through it all, dear Lord, we'll continue to call on you and give us the peace that we need to settle ourselves and settle our minds and our hearts. We're ready to receive the words that Reverend Stafford is going to bring forward to us. And we ask you, God, to bless her and touch her. Let the words that you, that you share with her to share with us be of benefit to us all so that we can start our week and we, it'll carry us on as we continue to go and grow. We ask for growth in the way that we love you, Lord. We ask for growth in the way that we study your word. We ask for growth in the way that we continue to heal from the negative things that are hitting us and hurting us always, Lord Jesus. And when it's all said and done, dear Lord, we continue to ask you for rest. We continue to ask you to take care of us. We continue to ask you to bless us once again. And I thank you, God, for my life, my health, and my strength. And so I, I say that to all of those who are listening in right now and ask you, dear God, to continue to bless me. And give me the strength that I need in order to continue to do your will as well as everyone else, dear God. And it's not a selfish prayer, dear Lord. It's just sometimes we have to pray for ourselves. We have to allow, allow you to work through us. And there's so many different things that are out there happening. God, and I just want to thank you again. Once again, dear Lord, I ask that you continue to bless and protect our minds and our hearts and give us the words that we need to help someone else as we continue to move forward. And these things we'll continue to ask in your name forever for. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from Psalms 138. I will be reading from the New International Version. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Let's do better than that. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ava. Thank you, Sister Lizzie. Thank you, Sister Teresa. Thank you, Sister Marilyn. And thank you, Sister Jean Western. Amen. For singing for us today. want to thank Sister Danielle for being our worship leader, to Brother Sam for praying for us, to Sister Kathy for reading scripture for us today, to Reverend McKelvey and to this wonderful group of musicians this morning, to our ushers and to those that greet us every Sunday morning, to those that are working in the sound booth and those that are on Facebook, YouTube, and on the telephone. And for those of you that sit among us this morning, we give God praise, amen. <laughs> Let us go now to the word of God. Psalm 17, verses one through eight. Psalm 17, verses 1 through 8. O Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. Declare me innocent, for you see those who do right. You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I am determined not to sin in what I say. I have followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I've not wavered from following you. I am praying to you because I know you will answer. Oh God, bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, as we come before your presence one more time. We come with thanksgiving. We come lifting up your holy name for you alone is worthy to be praised. Now, Lord, we pray for a triple portion of your spirit that you will allow your word to come forth with power and anointing from on high. Then, God, we pray for those of us that are listening that we may hear your word. Go out and tell dying men and women that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of of God is eternal life. This is our prayer, and it is in the mighty and sweet name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Our thought for today, hide me. Hide me. Hide me. We look at this word of God, and in this 17th Psalm, it talks about David talks about a time when David was going through some difficulties with Saul and how he was running and hiding from Saul because Saul wanted to kill him. And even though he knew that God was with him, the word of God says he cried out to the Lord and asked the Lord to help him and to have mercy upon him because his enemies wanted to destroy him. Even said to God, God, you know my inner thoughts, you know my mind, you know my spirit, you know what I've been through, you know that I've been living at this time according to your word. And so God, I'm crying out for help and I'm asking you to listen attentively to my prayer. I'm asking you that you would hear what I have to say and 
not that you would hurt my enemies, but God, that you would just hide me. And that God, that you would just hold me. And God, that you would just let me be under the shadows of your wings. And so the word of God says that at this time, Saul wanted to kill David because people loved David. And people knew what David stood for. Saul was not always a good man of God. And so he challenged the life of David. He challenged what David did, what David stood for, how David lived. And because of that, Saul decided he wanted to kill David. And so in the midst of everything that we find ourselves faced in, everything that we're going through today, sometimes our hearts get so heavy. and Sometimes our minds get so perplexed that we don't want to hear any more bad news. And so we begin to say to God, God, hide us. Hide us in the secret place of your tabernacle, God. Help us to know that even in the midst of trouble times, sometimes we feel some type of way. And so, God, we just need some refuge and we just need some strength sometimes, God, to go through the situations that we find ourselves in. And so sometimes, no matter what happens, sometimes you don't feel like getting up out of the bed. You just want to cover yourself up and make sure that the day goes by and say to God, God, I've gotten through that day. But what God lets us know that in the midst of us going through, in the midst of our trying times, that he will cover us with his wings like an eagle covers those young that he have, like God looks over this entire world world and he covers all of us and so in spite of the situation in spite of the bad times in spite of even the good times we begin to say to God God sometimes I just don't feel good sometimes I'm just hurting God sometimes I'm weak along the way but in spite of all that I'm going through God I just need you to hide me why because Sometimes it seems like things get so bad. and We always hear some bad news. But today to encourage your heart like David cried out to the Lord. You and I can cry out to God and ask God, God, do in us what you need to do in us, God. God, help us to be who you want us to be, God. Help us to live according to your word, God, not anything of ourselves. And that's what David said. David said, God, you know my heart. God, you've seen my works. God, you know even at night, God, I'm still worshiping and I'm still praising. I'm still lifting up your holy name and so in spite of what is going to happen and how somebody tries to take you out God is saying I'll hide you but I want you to understand that in the midst of me hiding you you've got to go through some rough days you've got to go through some tough days you've got to let your heart be in some places where you don't want it to be but God lets us know that in times of trouble he will hide us So we're going through now. Yes, every day, every day in this city we live in called Columbia, somebody's dying. Not because they just closed their eyes and not because they got sick, but somebody has decided to take their life by guns or knives or any kinds of killing, as we know the district superintendent in her own home went outside because she heard a noise. Two 15-year-old boys, they are in her yard trying to steal her car. And instead of them running away, they shot her to death, leaving a husband and four children. So today, I, I want you to understand that we're living in trying times. And yeah, we want to be able to say that where we live is our domain and nobody has the right to come in, but they do. And they come to trouble 
something that's going on that just may be going smoothly. They come to disturb your peace. They come to make sure that you don't think that you can just live and nobody bother you. But today, I want you to understand that God is saying, I'm going to hide you. I want you to understand that when the enemy comes up against you like a flood, God said, I'll lift up a standard against the enemy that the enemy will not be able to harm you. So in spite of what we're going through, sometimes we've just got to cry out to God and say to God, God, I need you to stop by. God, I need you to fix it. God, I need you to work it out. God, I need you to be my refuse and strength in the present time. I just need you. I just need you to hide me. Because sometimes my strength is weak. Sometimes I don't know which way to go, and I prayed over and over again, and that's what David said. I kept praying, and I kept crying out to the Lord, and I know that the Lord heard me. So, when we begin to think about that, and when we're in our most vulnerable moments, that's when the enemy wants to come to tempt us and to try us and to try to discourage us from living and doing what God has called us to do. And so, even though David was crying out to the Lord, and even though God had already given him the okay just to let him know there was much more work for him to do, so Saul could not take him out. We look at that. We continue to think about if David had to cry out, a man after God's own heart, what about you and I? What, what about you and I? Yes, we live in this sinful world. This is not our home. I, I know you're trying to stay as long as you can, but this is not our home. And so we do what we can to continue to live, but we do what we can to continue to allow God to manifest himself in us that we will do those things that are right and pleasing in God's sight. And so, when you get a chance, I want you to read it, but I want you to listen to the song sung by Pastor Bruce Parham. Song simply says, hide me. And he says, Lord, in the secret place, I just want you to hide me. When my strength is weak, Lord, I want you to hide me. Lord, in thy glory, I just want you to hide me. And even if the enemy is me, I, I need you, God, to fix me. Because even though I think it's somebody else, sometimes it could be in me. And so God is saying, I want you to understand whatever is going on, begin to cry out to God and say to God, God, hide me. Hide me from the enemy. Oh God, I just need you to hide me. Why? Because if you hide me, I already know that everything is going to be all right. And so people of God, no matter what, is going on. Sometimes we just need to learn how to encourage ourselves and be able to say to ourselves, I'm doing the very best that I can. Even when folks around you are saying negative things, I'm doing the very best that I can. And when I've done all that I know how to do, and when I've done it to the glory of God, God, I just thank you for hiding me under the shadows of the Almighty, under the shadows of your wing, God. Thank you for compassing me, God, and giving me what I need for my journey. So, when God does it, when God does it, it's going to be all right. Man can't do it for you. They ain't going to cover you with their wood. They ain't going to cover you with their hands. They ain't going to cover you with their prayers. Why? Because we don't have enough in us sometimes to be able to reach out to others. And so God says to us, I'm going to hide you. Like he said to David, David, don't you worry. 
I've got this. I've got your back, David. I'm taking care of you. And so people of God, remember, only God can do the impossible. Only God can keep us and bless us and hold us. And so when you get a chance, listen to the song. You get a chance, read the word of God and know that David cried out for help. David was a man anointed of God to do God's will and to do God's work. But Saul, who was superior to David in his mind, but not in his spirit, wanted to take him out. And so remember that if you ask God, God will cover you no matter what you are going through. Trust and believe that God will. Whenever you need him, you just call him. And he will come to your rescue. So David said, I, I'm just crying out because I know you're coming. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know what time, but I know you're coming. And so people of God, read the word of God when you get a chance. Listen to what David was saying to the Lord. That he said, in spite of everything, I know, God, if you hide me under the shadow of your wings, I know that everything will be all right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we pray want to pray for Lucy Jordan, sister of Solomon Berwick. Want to continue to pray for Reverend Pearson, who's still in the rehab center. Want you to continue to pray for Larry Wingate, who's at home now. Want you to continue to pray for all of those that are sick and shut in today. I want you to know that God is able to do the impossible today. So many families are still going through now their time of bereavement. And so we want you to pray. Pray much for families everywhere. Almost every day we hear of somebody we know that has gone home to be with the Lord. And so we want you to pray much. And as we pray this morning, so many are going through hard times, but we know that God is able to do all things that good. Maybe someone that's on YouTube or Facebook, or on the telephone, or even sitting among us, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We invite you to come today. Come to Jesus just as you are. The word of God says he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All we have to do is surrender unto him. He'll come in our lives and he'll be with us. And so today we invite you, no matter where you are, to lift up holy hands unto the Lord. To say to God, God, I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done. Ask God to come into your heart, to your mind and your spirit and make you a new creation in him. God will do it. Maybe someone that does not have a church home or does have a church home. But you've decided to make Francis Burns your church home. We invite you. Call our church office at 803-754-1760. You'll be connected to Krista, who will connect you with the pastor and other leaders of our church. We invite you to call. We invite you to make contact with us. We would love to bring you into the kingdom of God as we worship God together. Let us pray. Gracious 
and everlasting thou art God. We come now before your presence. First, God, we thank you for everything. And we praise you in all things. And we ask now that you look down upon each of us. Lord, we ask that you strengthen us where we're weak and fill us up now where we're torn down. For sometimes the cares of life is reeling and rocking us from side to side, but we know that you are a prayer answering God. You said we can ask whatever we will and it shall be done unto us. And so right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we humbly bow before you in humble submission unto your will and unto your way. Lord, we ask now that you continue to look down upon each of us. Look down upon those that are struggling right now. Look down upon those that are grieving, those that are sick in hospitals and nursing homes and in, in their own homes. Look down upon their caregivers right now, Lord. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with each of us, God. Continue to use us for your glory. Then, God, we pray now for our president and our vice president, God. We pray now, God, for this entire world. We pray for the people in Ukraine right now. We pray for these United States of America. We pray that gun violence and police brutality would cease, God. We pray that our young men will stop taking our young men's lives. God, we pray that you would move like only you can, God. We pray for District Superintendent Williams and her entire family as she's gone home to be with the Lord. We pray that you would move like only you can, God. We know that you're able. We know that you can. We know that you will. You said it is according to our faith, God. And so, Lord, as COVID is on the rampage again, God. We pray for every doctor, every nurse, every staff worker, everywhere that they are serving, God, we pray that you would move upon them. Lord, we pray that you continue to look down upon the principals and teachers as now, God, they are filling slots for people to work in the schools with our children. God, we pray for them right now. God, we pray for our superintendents and our administrators right now. God, we pray for our bus drivers, our cooks, our custodians, our counselors, God, our librarians in schools everywhere. God, we pray that you will continue to be with them, God. For these people still in Uvalde, Texas, God, that are learning all about what happened with their babies and those teachers. Lord, we pray for their hearts right now. We pray for their minds and their spirits. We pray for their brokenness right now, Lord. We pray now that you would move. Move upon them right now, Lord cover them and overshadow them like only you can. Lord, we pray now for our bishop and our cabinet, for our pastors and our lay folks everywhere, God. We pray for state and local officials everywhere. God, we pray for those that are homeless and those that are hungry this morning. We pray for those that are behind prison walls today. We are the children that you're looking for in these last and evil days that we would go forth knowing what you called us to do and that we would walk in obedience to your spirit. This is our prayer and it is in the mighty and sweet name of Jesus that we pray.
God is yet good. Today, by way of announcements, want to thank A.J. Robinson for reading for Reverend Pearson. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. COVID-19. On the rise. Those of you that have not gotten your vaccine, we ask that you please, please get your vaccine, get your booster shots, please. This is very important. I think this week we saw 13,700 and something new cases, and that's just the people that have reported. We saw 456 people hospitalized. And we saw, I think, 25 more deaths. And monkeypox is on the rise. I want you to be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful to please wear your mask. We know that everywhere we go, we see so many people unmasked, but please wear your mask. Please stay as socially distanced as you can. Please, please make sure that you do that as we continue those protocols here at Francis Burns. Please be mindful of that. Please don't gather in the hallways. Please exit the building. I know it's hot outside and you may need to go in your car and turn the air condition on and pull up beside somebody else's car to have a conversation. Please do that. Please, we want all of us to continue to be safe. We want all of us to continue to be healthy. And so for the things that we can do, let's make sure that we're doing that to help ourselves and to help others. It's very, very important. I want to continue to say to you that the mission and youth teams of this church are still collecting school supplies for school-aged children 5 to 12, working with the Salvation Army of the Midlands, and we have had a lot of donations. We still need a lot more, so we're asking you until July the 27th is the cutoff date from Monday through, fr Monday through Thursday from 9 to 4. You can bring all of your school supplies here so that we will help our young people along the way. That's very important, amen. Want to invite you to our Freedom School finale. Tickets are required to come to the Freedom School finale. As there again, we're going to be keeping in line with our COVID protocols. And so if you would like to come and you don't have a ticket, you need to get in touch with Sister Carol Singletary, but the tickets for the students and the allotted amount for their parents are already uh, given out for them. And so if you would like to come as a member of Francis Burns, you need to get in contact with Sister Carol Singletary who will get you a ticket. But there again, we are following our protocols here. So we want to make sure that everybody is socially distanced and make sure that we have a wonderful finale as these young people have been wonderful this past summer. And so we are grateful to the director, uh, Sister Carol, and to all of the people that are working with our students. Thank you so much to the Summer Brick Cafe for providing meals for them. Thank you, thank you so much. And so it's been a wonderful time of fellowship and learning for our young people. And so we ask that you continue to pray for them as we continue to go forward. Now we have this couple in here. Their wedding anniversary is today and they've been married for 57 years. Can y'all guess who that is? Solomon and Ella Berwick.
Some people hadn't even been here 57 years. They've been married 57 years. What a blessing, amen, what a blessing. So we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. Again, to all of you, thank you so much for being in service with us today. And as you continue to go forth, please be reminded that it's hot outside. For those of you that love to work in your gardens and love to work outside, please understand that it is hot outside. And just to look at the sun, you will sweat. And you may pass out because you want pretty flowers in your yard. Uh, you want fresh vegetables. Please, please be mindful. Fresh Market has some vegetables. And <laughs> you can get some. Please be mindful. Please, please be mindful. You don't have to worry about me. I won't plan anything. So we thank God again for each of you, and we pray God's blessings as we continue to go forth. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to stand as we bring these services to a close. Let us open our hands. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessing. Now, Lord, as we're about to leave this place but never your presence, we thank you for the angels that will watch over us as we travel up the dangerous highways. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. I'm sorry, I don't think I told you when the, fin when the finale is, right? July 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. July 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. Thank you again. Thank you.